So all these studies started, I think all of us as clinicians, we have some questions that basically are patients' questions. Uh, because I learned from my supervisor that we used to listen to patients. And sometimes you feel that you are not good enough, or at least you, don't, you cannot provide what they need. And uh, one of the questions that I have uh, as a clinician is, um, can I help these patients better? Can I do something better for them? And in testicular cancer, I have some questions that are different questions, but one of them is, can we predict when these patients get chemotherapy? After the chemotherapy, they have some residual disease that spreads in different parts of the body, but we don't know which disease they have. And in some cases, they have only necrosis, fibrosis, and we still take these patients for the OR room and we do a, like, a very invasive surgery. So I had a case with a patient, he had like 20 years old, and he was asking me, why do you want me to do the surgery? Why do you want to do the surgery if you, don't, you are not sure what I have? So and basically that was the question for this research. Can we predict uh, which type of histology that we have in these patients that get chemotherapy and uh, after we can be sure what's the best treatment for them. That was the, be the, the question that basically, or our hypothesis that uh, basically we had to start this study. So testicular cancer, since many years ago, we don't have very good clinical markers, either for diagnostic, either for prognostic. Um, so, but recently, basically since 2006, there, are, there were new studies that found that microRNAs, serum microRNAs, so liquid biopsies that we can use, um, they are diagnostic for testicular germ cell tumors, and they can detect seminoma, non-seminoma, which is very important, and they are very sensitive, and at the same time, they are very specific. So, at the same time, there, there were new studies that verified that we can use these microRNAs not only as a diagnostic tool, but also as a prognostic tool, because we can use them to follow up the treatment. Like patients on chemotherapy, we can monitor treatment because these microRNAs decrease during treatment. Some other studies found, um, found that uh, patients with relapse also have these elevated values of these different microRNAs that we can just use taking serum from the patients. So my question was, can we use these microRNAs to predict this disease that we have in these patients that we identify by CT scans after chemotherapy? So that, do we have any way to improve our uh, approach, like clinical approach, and see if these patients really need to have the surgery? Basically, if these patients have viable disease, it makes sense to do the surgery. And I was expecting to have higher values of these microRNAs in patients with viable disease instead of the other ones with necrosis and fibrosis that I was expecting to um, find very low levels or absent levels of these microRNAs. So basically our, our hypothesis was correct. So I, we found that patients with viable disease, for sure the patients that need to be treated, uh, they had higher values of microRNAs. Uh, which was interesting for us from the beginning because we didn't know exactly what we were expecting and so our hypothesis was correct. At the same time, after we tried to evaluate in our clinical cohort if we have any chance to, because we do this surgery in patients with residual lesions measuring more than one centimeter, so our the idea was to follow patients with a negative marker, like this microRNA with very low levels, and eventually admit that these patients could be followed instead of just going for surgery. And what we found was that for the patients with a negative marker and lesions with less than three centimeters, so measuring more than one centimeter, three centimeters, we could f follow these patients because we didn't have any patient with viable disease with a positive marker. So all the patients with a negative marker were different, they had different histology either than viable disease. So that means basically that we can use this marker to follow patients and when the marker is negative eventually we can increase the follow-up of these patients and follow patients with larger uh, residual masses. Of course this is just a preliminary study but the results are very promising. That's a challenging thing to say that because we still have to prove it uh, with different studies, different cohorts, more patients. And one of the things that we have in microRNAs, we have to 
to, to have a standard way, a standard assay that we can use in different hospitals and make sure the results are reliable and we can repeat the results in different places. So we still have to do that. The results are just promising. I wouldn't say that we can change our way of following patients, but at least we have something more that we didn't have, we didn't have before. And for that reason, of course, I, mean, I have the faith that we can change a little bit the paradigm and we can I mean, I mean, we can give more to these patients and provide a better care, for sure.